Hey, thanks, Bob. Welcome everyone to the Region 3 uh, meeting. It's, it's good to see everyone today and, and thank you for joining us. Wanna ask everyone to sign in please uh, on the chat so that we, we know who's here. So please take time to do that. Uh, and then uh, wanna thank McKinney ISD for hosting this meeting. I know it's, uh, it's not in person like we would all uh, like it to be. We're, we're doing a Zoom meeting again just because of the times we're in. Uh, but I do want to turn it over and, and thank Jennifer Frazier and congratulate her again, our new AD in McKinney ISD. And Jennifer, um, please take a moment and welcome everyone and uh, congrats again. Thank you. And yes, I just uh, obviously just want to say um, welcome. Um, as most some of you may or may not know, I am uh, going to try to fill the big shoes of Coach Pratt. He has taken a new role within our district as the Assistant Superintendent of uh, Student Services, Health and Security. So um, I know um, I, I wish we could be in person so everybody could, uh, we could embarrass him a little bit and just uh, let everybody love on him. But I would encourage you to reach out to him and just, I know he's been a big support for everybody, a lot of people on this call. So um, I'm honored to be able to step into this role and, and obviously we wanna um, do whatever we can to continue to support the THS ADA. So thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Jennifer, appreciate that. At this time, uh, we wanna thank our state sponsors or who are here today, you're so important. Uh, to our organization and we really appreciate your support. And so first I wanna turn it over to John Gayhart with RFS Sports. So John. Thanks to everyone. It's great to see you guys. And I'm not, rather than just sit here and talk about flooring, which gets boring after 30 seconds, I'm gonna show a couple of pictures of some projects that we've done over the last 12 to 18 months, just to give everybody a good idea, maybe some ideas and inspiration and as you are either going through quick renovations or planning a facility that may be a year or two out, please uh, just don't hesitate to contact us and help us. Uh, let us know how we can help. The very last picture is gonna have my phone number and email address so you can screenshot it or whatever to get in touch. So just some quick pictures for you guys. This is the new Rock Hill High School that we got to work with Valerie on and it's just absolutely gorgeous. This is Lake Highlands High School that we got to work with Leslie and Kevin on. You can see a lot of them have the inlaid platforms there. This is Cleburne High School that we just uh, completed two weeks ago for Jerry. This is one of the weight rooms at Byron Nelson High School. There's two weight rooms um, on their, in their new addition and renovation. This is one of them. This is Lake Belton High School that just got completed over the summer. This is All Saints Episcopal in Fort Worth that also got renovated this summer. This is Henderson High School in East Texas with a big renovation. And you can see, as I mentioned, the inlaid platforms is just the, the way that most facilities are going now uh, for ease of, of use and makes the room a lot more functional. This is Copper's Cove. You can see that they uh, incorporated some turf as well. Lake Travis High School that got renovated last summer. Marshall High School was also last summer. DeSoto High School, you'll see some very common designs. This one we just completed at the end of this summer. This is Brazoswood High School. In uh, Springwoods, we renovated during the shutdown. They took advantage of, of some, some time there. A lot of people don't know that we also do lockers. This is Atlanta High School that we completed this summer. That we did the flooring and the lockers. You can see they did the helmet and shoulder pad racks up top. They've got the nice cushions on the, on the bench. So just a nice design there for lockers. We just did this one for Becky um, over the summer as well at Azel High School, a renovation there. Um, where we retrofitted some around a concrete uh, bench on the wall and then freestanding in the middle. This is Second Baptist, where we did the lockers and the flooring down in Houston. And then a lot of people don't realize that we also do gymnasiums. We're very well known for weight rooms, but we do gymnasiums, both wood and multi-purpose. This is San Saba High School that we completed this summer. And then if anybody needs to take a quick, a quick uh, screenshot of that, that's how you can get in touch with me. You can call or text me and uh, I'm happy to come out and do any measurements. A lot of people, you see a lot of high schools there. Um, we also do, we have more affordable products that go into middle schools and do complete middle school renovations and all of that. So 
I'm lucky enough to work with a lot of you, born and raised in this area. And um, I just, I appreciate what you guys do for our athletes so much. I have an athlete in high school and I know how hard it is. So I just appreciate everything that you do and letting us be a part of it. Thank you, John. Really appreciate your support and you guys do great work uh, as you as you can see with, we are so excited about our, our new weight room. So thank you. Thank uh, you. At this time, I wanna introduce John Rouse with Symmetry Sports Construction. John? Well, thank you, Coach. And uh, it's a privilege for us to be here today and, and uh, sponsor this event. And uh, we're certainly looking forward to uh, the playoffs as they get ratcheted up here soon. Um, my name is John Rouse, and I'm recently retired as superintendent uh, after 27 years coaching. Um, and then uh, knowing that uh, my wife and I are actually both graduates of Berkner High School, so we're glad to see the, the Rams uh, flying colors today. Um, I, after retirement, I went into uh, work with Symmetry Sports Construction, and I'm very privileged to be a part of that organization. And, we're a full service uh, sports construction company, um, the exclusive distributor for AstroTurf products in Texas. Um, we do maintenance on fields uh, to keep those fields safe for our student athletes uh, and extending the, the life of those, those artificial fields. Um, it uh, goes without saying how proud I am of our, uh, our profession with the work that you all are doing uh, in light of some very difficult and challenging times. And so just know that uh, we appreciate you. We appreciate all you do and your staff uh, for the kids in a very challenging time. And I know that it's ever changing, um, but the right people are in there doing things that need to be done. Uh, Symmetry Sports Construction is based out of Mount Pleasant, Texas. Um, as I said, we're full service. We do uh, football, baseball, softball, tracks, tennis courts, and uh, we, uh, we are proud to partner with AstroTurf, who, as you know, is a worldwide leader in the industry and not only the first, um, but also has the, the highest quality of any of the products out there. And I do just want to hit on uh, their trionic fiber that uh, was the Synthetic Turf Council Innovation of the Year, uh, uh, which is AstroTurf and our root zone, nylon root zone system um, keeps that uh, infill from migrating, uh, making it a more safe field for your student athletes uh, and extending the functional life of your turf system. So with that, I would like to just share with you a, a, a few of the pictures that, that we have. And, and John, uh, let you know, Valerie is going to get lots of screen time today because we've, we've got her highlighted as well. Uh, on our pictures. But the first one that I want to show you, and hopefully you can see this one, um, is Melissa ISD. This is their uh, Cardinal Stadium, um, which we just completed uh, at the end of the summer. Uh, and we're really proud of it, great facility. Uh, Zato Park, which uh, is, a, is a, a park in Melissa where they host thousands of baseball and softball games. We, uh, we did that one as well. And we're doing their indoor when it's completed will be one of the largest of its kind. Uh, next, you'll see Austin Westlake. Uh, there, this is a picture of their softball field. We did baseball and softball. We're very proud uh, of this facility as well. Um, Palestine in East Texas, Palestine ISD. This was uh, uh, completed this summer as well. And this is just another look at some of the different designs that uh, you can do with the every 10 yards contrasting turf colors. Uh, beautiful, beautiful field. Um, this is one that's quite unique. This is Parish Episcopal uh, in Dallas. And uh, as you can see, it's blue. Um, and it's, uh, it's interesting. You can actually see it from uh, the air when you're flying into Lo Dallas Love Field. Uh, we've had several people contact and say, yeah, I saw so uh, a very, very interesting, unique, beautiful field. Uh, this is Crandall, uh, which is just east of the Metroplex. Uh, we finished it uh, lat late last spring and also uh, their indoor facility. They have a new indoor facility as well. Um, all the way down to the coast, uh, Nederland. We finished this one uh, at the end of the summer uh, and, and uh, it, it turned out beautiful as well. Uh, 
Um, this is Tomball baseball. We did baseball and softball, and they are in the process of doing a uh, $58 million stadium, and we will be uh, upping our AstroTurf stadium facility as well. Um, as far as tracks, this is uh, Miller Grove High School in Miller Grove, Texas, which is a small 1A school with a tremendous track program. And uh, they did the green color. It's a beautiful, beautiful track. And they kind of patterned it after Mike Myers in Austin. And then this is Ennis, which we finished this summer. Uh, Coach Drake, Coach Harrell uh, were, were great to work with and did a fine job on the design and a beautiful field. Uh, and then we have Prosper Rock Hill. Uh, very proud of this, uh, this facility, baseball, softball, football, and track. Uh, and not to mention, it's just a beautiful high school and what a great, great facility. So uh, a beautiful uh, picture of, of those three or four fields that we did. And uh, we're very proud of that, as I know uh, Miss Little is. And then last is uh, Bullard High School. This is one of my favorites. It's just a, uh, it has such pop to it. It's a beautiful field. Uh, with the AstroTurf 3D 360 with a Brock pad and uh, Brock fill, which is the temperature lowering uh, infill. And so um, with that, that's all the, the information I have. We are, if you follow us on Twitter, uh, you can be entered to win a $100 Visa gift card uh, for a drawing on November 15th. I'll leave that information in the chat room. Uh, we appreciate your time. Know that we support you uh, and appreciate all that you do. God bless you and stay well. Thank you. Thank you, John. We really appreciate your support uh, of our association. So thank you for being here today. Uh, at this time, Chris Johnson with Musco Lighting. Chris? Yes, thank you for letting us be here. Um, Musco Lighting is a sports lighting company that uh, takes care of your football fields, your baseball fields, softball, indoor. Um, LED is basically all we sell anymore. So one thing that we do have that is new uh, that I wanted to tell you about is Musco Vision. Uh, what this is, is an online streaming service that allows you to stream your events, whether it be baseball, football, graduation. Um, it is pay-per-view, um, so there is income for the district and re revenue sharing. So if that's something that you're interested in, uh, please give us a call. Um, McKinney ISD already has it on their stadium uh, that we're doing there, so that's all I had. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you being here as well. And just a reminder, um, everyone, if you have not uh, signed in in the chat, please go ahead and do that. Um, and then at this time, we want to talk about our committee reports and we'll start out with membership with Valerie Little. Okay, so all of our membership renewal invoices have gone out. They went out August 31st. <clears throat> Excuse me, if you didn't receive that, you need to contact Allie Kinsey in the THSADA office. Once you have paid that invoice, you will get an email prompting you to update your profile in the system. Registration for THSADA group, individual, and virtual conference is all still available online, and you can find that on our website. Remind any of your coaches who are curious about our membership benefits. Right, those include our TAC training, um, email alerts, notifying members of statewide updates, as well as our THS ADA newsletters. And then if you are not receiving emails from THS ADA services, then probably what's happened is your school district spam is the filter is probably blocking those emails. So just contact Allie um, and she can help you guys with that and take care of it. Okay, thanks Val. Uh, and then next we'll be TAC with Jerry Littlejohn. Good morning, everyone, and congratulations, Jennifer. Uh, just real quick, I have just one thing that I want to share with you all this morning, and it is that the only way to gain access to the library of course offerings offered at this year's conference is to register for the conference, just like always. Uh, most of the courses offered in our virtual conference this December will be recorded and available to registered attendees in the spring, shortly after the completion uh, of the conference. So. To access those things later on, if you miss them during the virtual conference, you have to be a registered attendee for the conference. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Okay, publications, Grace. Hi, everybody. So our next newsletter will be in December and our region's contribution to the next newsletter will be an article about event planning 
in the COVID-19 era, something new, right? New and exciting. So I'll be reaching out to several of you to get some insights so we can share how we're doing things in our region uh, with the rest of the state. Great, thank you. And then NIAAA, Lisa and Stacy. Hello, um, NIAAA, um, just like the state conference is going to be a virtual conference this year. Um, uh, unfortunately, there's a little overlap with our state conference and the national conference. Uh, the NIAAA conference is uh, December the 7th through the 14th. Uh, the registration uh, is obviously is, is uh, reduced uh, than if we were in person because there's no lunching or, or banquet. Uh, so the registration is $165. Uh, I believe there's 36 uh, work, workshops um, and, and you'll have access to the conference until uh, January the 15th. And one thing about the national conference, if you're interested in taking those LTI courses, they always um, have all those courses available at the national conference and it will be the same way with the virtual um, starting on the 7th. Um, to look at the NIAAA website, they have the schedule already posted in LIT uh, courses. And the courses are the same price they would be if we were in person, which is less than what they will be if you do the webinar. Um, although we are the conference will be virtual, there are um, network opportunities. There will be some engaging uh, engagement. Uh, so it's not all just sit and get, well, we'll still be sitting. We, we just... Uh, you'll have opportunity to engage uh, one another. And one uh, area that I'm not certain everyone is aware of, back uh, uh, the fifth strategic plan for the uh, NIAAA included um, talk about uh, the underserved uh, population of ADs. And so back in February at our board meeting, we uh, assigned a um, subcommittee within the board to uh, look at diversity. And this occurred long before the George Floyd uh, situation. And right now the uh, NIAAA has a ad hoc uh, uh, committee that has morphed, the, na the name is now the DEI, uh, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. Uh, and that, that committee uh, meets uh, regularly like every two weeks and I've been a part of almost all of their meetings and things like that. Uh, so you'll see there's going to be um, some panel discussion and some workshops on that topic uh, because, you know, number one, it's, you know, it's something that's at the forefront right now and it's something that needs to be addressed and, and things like that. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to um, what, what the conference will provide us. Um, you know, one course that I will talk up, uh, LTI 706 is one of the newer cor courses. So it's on coaching coaches and and, you know, I, I contributed a little to it. I wasn't an author, but um, so again, if you're interested in, the, in those courses and, and haven't been able to uh, take advantage of coming to a national or going to a national conference, here's an opportunity to uh, not, you know, save the money on the travel and still be able to get all the uh, wonderful professional uh, learning uh, in, from the comfort of your home. Um, and the conference hours, uh, they all vary, but you got to remember we have members that are in Hawaii, so we might be going in the afternoon and they're sitting down having their breakfast coffee while the conference is going on. So, um, so that's the report. Uh, Stacy, did I miss anything? Oh, oh and Stacy is running for the uh, secretary to the board. And that's all I can say on it because that's all I'm allowed to say. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. That shout out there. So um, you guys, I'd love to have your vote, but I'd hope to see you guys on the conference. It's sure to be a great time. Thanks, Lisa. Great. Thanks, Stacy. Thanks, Lisa. Okay, policy with Sylvia. Hey, sorry, um, just jumping in. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, the Legislative Council met this weekend and um, on Sunday and Monday. Um, the updates to policy and if I forget something, please Leslie add to that. But um, the esports, they brought up the esports as a UIL sanctioned activity. I think that was approved. Um, the other item that they had on there was about uh, the no plas. The sorry, there was a proposal to lift a no pass, no play rule um, due to the pandemic. And the issue with that is that's not a UIL rule; it's a law, so they can't do. You can't do anything about that. Um, the UIL cannot do anything about that. 
um, that law. So um, that was not really addressed. Um, a proposal to amend the full-time day student rule. Leslie, can you add to that? I can't remember what that was. Um, let me find. Sorry to um, put you on the spot, but no, I, I was no. trying to catch up on some things and. Um, You're okay. I, well, and what I'll do, so if you don't mind, like I, I have them in a different order. So okay. if I can do that, I will hit that. And I will say this about eSports, and if anyone can clarify for me, I thought it was a little confusing, but what they put in writing, um, if you go to the UIL website, they put that the proposal to add eSports as a UIL sanctioned activity would be monitored by UIL staff. So it was talked about, and I mm -hmm. think it was a little bit confusing, but what they actually put out yesterday, the day before in writing on the website is that they were gonna to continue to monitor it. So does okay. anybody else, committee, Sylvia, what did you think about that or is that No, correct? I thought that was already an activity that, that was actually taking place. So yeah, I, that's what I, I got of it, but. Dr. Harrison said it would be, he said at some point he can see that being that that would be our next thing and we'll end up having to take it on. And so that's why he wants them to monitor. Right. Um, it sounds like it's going to happen. They're just listening under the section of monitor for right now. Got it. Okay. Yes. Okay. I think those were the only items on there. Um, I guess I would defer the water polo thing to Becky. I think she's over athletics. Does that come on her, under her item? Well, I don't mind what I can do because I know this is, the, you know, instead of bouncing back and forth, I don't mind yeah. since we're on policy right now. I can go ahead and go and kind of in order of what, um, basically what they put on the website as a synopsis of, of what happened. And okay. uh, what they did is they decided to delay, you know, water polo was passed as a pilot. And the way it came out, it says that they're going to allow the UIL to delay the following pilot program for one year and it's water polo. So we do have a little bit of time. Uh, I know for one, I really appreciate that. It felt very rushed in the middle of a, of a pandemic. So that sounds like that, that, you know, I think that was a, a good decision. Um, the other one that the staff is going to study, this one is to add a two week period before baseball and softball for pitchers and catchers. So that's something that, um, that they're going to study because that was a proposal. The other thing that um, their staff is going to uh, survey the following proposals. Flexibility for schools to interchange when the 60 minute skills training and 60 minute strength and conditioning are scheduled. And they're also going to study a proposal to give an additional 60 minutes of strength and conditioning outside the school day. Uh, there were several um, proposals that were denied um, or rejected. Uh, there was a proposal to create a separate 1A conference in volleyball, softball, and baseball. Um, that was either rejected, denied, or took no action. Also under this category, the proposal to consider a $5 increase for officials for the 2021-2022 school year. Um, and then the proposal, a, a proposal to adjust the junior high athletic start time. So again, those were denied, rejected, or took no action. Uh, and then the one that was passed, uh, there's proposal to amend section 1204 to adjust the portal to portal travel reimbursement and remove the last mileage range. Um, so that one did pass. And then the other one that passed, the authority to make the decisions uh, regarding resuming UIL activities, it's basically goes back to the resolution where Dr. Brightup has the ability and the authority to make changes uh, without having a full legislative council uh, meeting or vote. So uh, that's really kind of it for, um, I believe for UIL Legislative Council, Sylvia or anyone else, do you think we missed anything? Anybody? Okay. No, I didn't know which parts, I didn't want to cross over on some of those, so. <laughs> yes. No, thank you. No, I appreciate it. Because there's definitely some, some crossover and uh, no, I appreciate that. And now um, an update uh, from Becky with the Athletic Committee, please. Uh, good morning. Uh, I really am just going to say hi because Leslie pretty much did my 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 follow up there for everything for the Legislative Council, so that's good. The only thing that that I will say um, that Andre wanted us to to just send out the invitation. If you've had a unique circumstance 
or if you've had something that you think the athletic committee should look at due to COVID or any other situation, if you'll just email us uh, so we can address that. Um, but other than that, um, the UIL changes, um, Leslie went over, so we don't need to do that again. Uh, but if you have any questions, send us an email and um, we will be glad to take care of it. And everybody hang in there. We're going to make it. Thank you, Becky. Appreciate that. Um, next on the agenda, agenda is regional business, which really was more of just a recap of, of UIL Legislative Council. And, and honestly, when I was thinking about the agenda and and talking to Bob and getting ready for this meeting, it seems like the only thing we talk about and the only thing we deal with is COVID. Um, I wish there was there was more to talk about, but it consumes every day, every minute of our day. Um, it's the reason some people were late getting on this call. It's the reason that we have ADs not even on this call today because we are rescheduling things. Um, it's just, it's, it's our, really our new normal right now. And that's what we do. And um, I can't wait till the day that we're back to um, regular regional business, which is just taking care of coaches and kids in a normal year and not in the middle of a pandemic because we've never been challenged like this. So um, I agree with what Becky said. I mean, we've got to hang in there and we've got to rely on each other. And um, I picked a reflection topic um, and some, you know, some panelists that I think can really add value. Uh, we have so many people um, that are working so hard and so many great leaders um, in this region. And I want to thank Coach K and, and Jennifer Frazier and Jeff Smith um, for being our panelists for our reflection topic today. And the question is, what has been the biggest challenge for you this fall in regards to dealing with your role as an AD during a pandemic? Because there's challenges every day, but we really want to focus on what you believe for you and your district has been the biggest. And would like to start with uh, Coach K, please. Oh, Coach K, you're muted. <laughs> I make fun of people that don't mute, so that's me now. Um, no, what, what I was saying basically is this, is that you, you, know, you talk about what is the biggest challenge. Uh, every single day, starting back in, golly, last spring, we thought that every single challenge that came up was the biggest challenge. And I, I think it's... The question really is maybe what is the latest biggest challenge that you have? Because I can remember at the start of the, the, the summertime and all it was was about uh, social distancing and mask and, you know, making sure everything was doing the uh, wiping the, the weight room down and cleaning up and all that kind of stuff. And we still do those things, but then we transitioned on into, uh, you know, uh, outdoors and making sure everything's done right. And then school started. And, uh, you know, it's now we're into, okay, what does a game look like? Well, we've already passed that. We know what a volleyball game looks like. We know what a football game looks like. And, and, and I guess the, the point I'm trying to make is that we're still emphasizing all of those same things. But now the, the thing that is most recent, I think, on everybody's mind is just uh, what, what do the playoffs look like? Uh, how do you get your playoff teams? Um, you have some... Uh, basically guidelines and rules that maybe you put in place back in August and you realize now that we are in way into the season and some of those things are not matching up and they don't apply. And uh, we have talked this office quite a bit with UIL and with uh, Susan in particular uh, a lot the last couple of weeks. And uh, one of the things that she continues to just uh, press and press and press us on is just don't be afraid to go back in there and look at what you have down and if it's not right and if it's not fitting right the DEC can go in there and change anything and uh, you know we that's that's almost exclusively what we spent the last couple of weeks on both in our volleyball programs and in our football programs and um, you know and, and there's no cookie cutter thing that works for everybody so what we like might not work in West Texas, what they're doing in West Texas might not work in the Valley, might not work in East Texas, et cetera. But I, I just think that uh, one of the things that I'm proud of that, that we've done lately is that we've, we've really sat down with the, uh, the, the athletic directors uh, in di our districts and uh, staffs on their districts. And we sat down and we vetted things out amongst ourselves. 
even before we're bringing them to the coaches because sometimes the coach's perspective is a little bit skewed because they're worried about their program and their team and, and how is this going to affect my program, how is this going to affect my team, where sometimes the athletic directors, they have the similar uh, perception of it, but they can remove themselves a little bit and try to figure out, okay, what's best for the district or what's best for the uh, everybody in total. And... Um, but, you know, uh, everybody could go through the highlighting what that is as far as when you have not game. I, I think the next thing on the uh, peaking over the horizon, which is already here in uh, team tennis and cross country, it's right around the corner, is what do playoffs look like in volleyball and what do they look like in football? And, and what does that look like when uh, you think you've got the four teams that are set to go and then one of them comes down with COVID and they can't go? Um, I know that uh, I know that uh, UIL has not really given us uh, much guidance in that area this yet, but I I think that they might. I think with the 4A coming up pretty soon, right around the corner uh, across the state, something's going to happen, and that's going to trigger uh, some some things in people's minds. Okay, well that's how they did that, and and we can tweak it and maybe do it a little differently, et cetera. We. We've, uh, we've, we've heard a lot of rumors of different ways that things could be done, whether it's bringing up the fifth place team and moving everybody up or whatever the case might be. And then also what happens when you're in the third or fourth round of the playoff and someone goes down, do you go backwards and, and get the team that that team beat the week before? Uh, I think right now everything's on the table. It's kind of like it is when we're, we're trying to figure out what our, our new guidelines and rules are COVID related. We have a section now that, uh, in, in especially in our football, that we didn't have in before, which is a full page of COVID-related uh, issues that we might be able to uh, determine uh, who the, the representatives are, even without, even with them missing a game, with them having a no contest. Um, another thing that uh, I know that uh, Susan is really uh, big on is she doesn't like the word forfeit. And if y'all have the word forfeit in your guidelines or bylaws, you need to look at that real closely. Um, I don't think that the UIL draws a line and says you can or can't do something. But when the director of the UIL, the athletic director, recommends that we look hard at that and not put that in our rules and regulations, we're going to do it. Well, I'm going to do everything I can in whatever DEC that I'm involved with to make that happen because what happens is that you end up, if you do that, then there's a loss and there's some punitive issues when the team can't play. When it's not their kid's fault that they can't play, it could either be that they are positive or it could be that they are quarantined through no fault of their own. So they're trying to make it where, and, and we had opportunities in all sports to rearrange your football schedule so you could have some buys in there so that you could play some of these games that you're missing. And some districts did that and some districts didn't do that. And the ones that didn't do that are the ones that are working their hardest now trying to figure out, okay, we're not, it's a no contest. What does that mean? How's that going to come out to uh, preparing uh, to who the playoff people are? So um, I'm sorry, I, I talked a little bit too long on there, but uh, that that's my contribution, Lizzie. No, thank you, Coach K. Uh, that's good stuff. I really appreciate that. And one thing I want to add about the forfeit I don't know if y'all saw the article where Dr. Uh, Jamie Harrison was quoted saying that uh, if the DEC, if you have in your plan that that there's a forfeit, if it's COVID related, that that school could appeal to the SEC. So that's going to be real interesting. And I know it's very challenging trying to find tiebreakers and no contest, or do you just count wins? And if you leave the forfeit, you have to know that that school has that ability to send it to the SEC. So Definitely going to be challenging times, uh, and so I appreciate those those points and, and your perspective, Coach K. Okay, Jennifer uh, Frazier from McKinney ISD. Well, I think my situation is a little bit unique because I'm literally about four weeks into this role, so um, it's a um, you know my, it's it's a little bit different, I think, for me and some of the things that I'm that I might be focusing on. But I think the two bigger things that I would probably consider right now is. Number one, I think just communication um, between coaches and coaches and parents, coaches and um, myself, this athletic office when it comes to what is appropriate to communicate to parents when it comes to COVID, when it comes to quarantines, um, you know, just a lot of times they have information that they think might some, something might happen or they might think somebody's going to go into quarantine or we might end up have to 
cancel a game and just making sure that that communication happens with this office first before they go out and, and communicate to other coaches and to other teams and, and things like that. So I feel like we're doing a good job, but I, I, there's no doubt that that's on my radar just to making sure that we're staying consistent and that we're not over communicating things that we don't details we don't need to communicate. Um, but I think really probably the biggest thing that, that's hit me in the face is just that I think anytime you step into a new leadership role, you get excited about possible opportunities to lead out. And, um, and I've just been so um, just struck at, at just our coaches are weary and they're tired. And, um, and I feel like in McKinney, we have some incredible coaches. And, um, and just the other day, I was just driving down the road and a coach called and he just said, I just need to talk. He said, I'm just struggling. I am struggling. And, um, and of course they're struggling. We're all struggling. And so I think it's just constantly finding that balance of trying to hold them accountable to the things that we want them to do and, and some of the programs that we've implemented. But then also just like what you just said a minute ago, Leslie, understanding that we're also focused on COVID and making sure that we're playing games and we're doing all these kind of things that striking that balance that we don't just overwhelm them with our expectations that we're kind of also still loving on them and encouraging them and just, and just knowing when it's appropriate to step back and let them take a breath and just to breathe and just be that voice of encouragement. And, and I'll be honest, I didn't have any great words of wisdom for that coach. I just listened. I just listened and I acknowledged it. And I was like, yeah, that really does stink. I mean, it does. His situation was just, it was really great. We're hitting. He had had some kids put in quarantine. It was just, it's, it's not anything that a lot of other coaches aren't going through, but I think for me, that's the balance. And I'm just trying to be very intentional and just trying to be very methodic methodical and, 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 you know, and obviously Coach Pratt has set up so many incredible things for this district. So it's, it's um, a lot of those things take care of themselves. But I do think as, as Coach K said, we're kind of going in and in, in uncharted territory. And so I just kind of want to make sure that I can be both things for our coaches. Thanks, Jennifer. I think that's a great point uh, about we just have to be intentional and available for our coaches. Uh, because all the problems we had before and all the expectations we had before about coaches and making connections with kids and being there for them and following UIL rules and communication with parents. I mean, none of that went away. So we have the normal expectations and then we have the new expectations of dealing with COVID. And so I think that being intentional and available and, and checking on our coaches. And I was talking to Coach K on the phone yesterday and he brought up a great point. He said, you know, we need to make sure we're checking on those first and second year coaches, especially. Can you imagine being a first year teacher coach? I mean, unbelievable, because some of us have been doing this role a long time and, and we've coached and we've been there and we're struggling. So I can't imagine a first, second year teacher coach. So I, I thought that was great advice and appreciate that, Coach Kay. And I'm going to try to be intentional about really reaching out and not just asking our coordinators to do it, but personally me sending that text, picking up the phone or sending that email. So appreciate that insight. Um, Jeff Smith from Plano ISD. Jeff. Thanks, Leslie. And, and I appreciate the opportunity. Um, <clears throat> you know, much like uh, Coach Frazier, um, I was fortunate enough to step into this role just last, uh, I guess, late February. And, and so uh, it was not a month later and uh, COVID starts. And so uh, you know, obviously that was a big learning curve for everyone, but, but for me, you know, obviously coming in, having an opportunity to come in here into this great district and, um, you know, there, there, it was just a lot and, uh, and, you know, but I, I do want to say this, I uh, appreciate all of you. Uh, there's so much strength uh, in this group and in this organization. And I've gotten a chance to, to see that obviously firsthand over the last few years, but just so much wisdom and, and I just want to thank a lot of you that have reached out to me and to us here in this district and just guided us and helped us and uh, sorry if I've just been burning your phone up, uh, you know, but uh, I always appreciate that being able to pick up the phone and call someone and and uh, that makes all the difference uh, just to, to learn and listen to see what everyone is doing and obviously I uh, want to thank everybody for that. I've been fortunate where I've worked at Prosper with Coach Little and McKinney with Coach Pratt and Coach Frazier and appreciate you guys. Um, I was also thankful with Ralph Hines and, and Karen Califer here. They're just so awesome. And uh, so uh, our team is great and, and so much appreciate them. Um, you know, I, I think uh, to piggyback a little bit on what Coach Frazier said, I think that the thing that <clears throat> that um, was hard is, is obviously when this hit, with, with we're thankful for Zoom and thankful for all these great uh, opportunities to reach out and, and, and those things. But you know, just the connection that we long for with our coaches, with our uh, with with our athletic directors across the state. We, we're not able to see each other like 
we like to, but uh, you know, we're used to, we, we love to meet with our coaches and see them and shake their hands and hug their necks and, and, uh, and all those types of things. And so I think really trying to uh, be aware of that, um, you know, coming into this, into this role, you know, uh, you know, you've got ideas, you've got things, you, you talk about things that you want to do and, and those types of things, but, um, uh, you know, kind of had to put some of those on, on pause for a little bit, you know, and, and just really say, look, we need, you know, let's focus on the coaches, focus on each other, focus on what all they're going through because they are going through so much right now. And, and, uh, we've seen some of the same things with our coaches, but, um, you know, it, it's just not the same with, um, with staying people virtually. And, and, um, you know, I, I think that's been a real thing. We've truly really tried to meet a lot, uh, virtually with our coaches. Obviously we're able to go by and see them. Um, you know, we laugh in our office because, uh, you know, because of quarantines, we're, we'll stay in someone's office or we'll, we'll meet with someone for about 14 minutes. And whenever that 14 minutes is up, uh, we've got to go because we don't, <laughs> we don't want to get quarantined or get someone quarantined. And so, uh, we laugh about that all the time. It, it's very true. I mean, we, we really try to be careful, but, um, you know, we're, we're trying to find any way we can to connect with our coaches and, and just get the information out. Uh, to them uh, so they can do their job and hopefully make it easier for them. But that's that's been a big challenge uh, because we all want to see each other and, and want to be around each other. Thankful thankful for our team in that way. Um, just with the uncertainty, I, I mean, whenever we were looking at, at all these things, there's just so much uncertainty, as you know, and, and things change daily. And, and um, you know, w when we look at events, when we talk with our team just about events and we, you know, hosting events and, and putting on safe venues, I know in our district, we have so many different setups at so many different gyms and so many different stadiums. It may be one way at one and very different at another. And so it's not really a one size fits all. And, and uh, we would love to use some of the uh, online ticketing to really space people out. But un unfortunately, our team's done a lot of taping, a lot of, you know, a lot of signage, a lot of things that we've had to do manual because we don't have every seat numbered maybe in every venue. And that's been challenging. But we really have tried, we've, uh, I think every week after an event that's really helped us is we really meet on Monday and we just go through all of our events the week before and talk about them and as a team and say, where did, you know, where was it good? Where was it bad? And and where can we learn? And now we're talking about basketball and our gyms for volleyball are going to be very much, they're very much different in, in how basketball will be. I uh, heard someone yesterday on, on the, um, on one of these calls, just talk about you know, where they're doing same site, same night. In our district, we're not uh, doing that uh, most of the time. We are in some situations with some schools, but uh, that, that'll be a challenge, you know, with, with everybody wanting to stay and watch a game. And so do you clear gyms? Do you not? How does that work? And, and so um, we're thankful for, we went to online ticketing. That's something that we hadn't done in the past, and that's been great. That's been a real positive, but we're going to have to really look at how we do basketball because we have bigger crowds in basketball and are we going to need to clear gyms, sell tickets a certain way? Um, how, what does that look like? And so we're having those conversations. And like many of you, you've probably been meeting with your coaches about this transition from, from volleyball to basketball and football to basketball and how we have coaches coaching multiple sports and some of them coach both of those sports and how do we uh, how are we fair with both of those sports and making sure everybody's taken care of and kids are getting coached. And so we've had those meetings and they've gone, gone really well, really proud of all of our coaches and coordinators for, for executing that plan. But that's been a challenge, but uh, you guys said it, it seems like every day uh, something new uh, pops up and, and we, uh, we take on that challenge and, and uh, couldn't do it without all of you appreciate you and your support and uh, appreciate our team here and, and look forward to, to good days ahead. Thank you, Jeff, and, and thank you, Jennifer, and thank you, Coach K, for, for talking to us today and being on this panel. And, and I just want to remind everybody, too, that, you know, definitely we need to be available and we need to take care of our coaches. And, and please take care of your, your assistants and your, your office staff. And, um, you know, I know that I, I couldn't do my job without, without Kevin and the, and the two ladies in our office. And, you know, I just think we got to be intentional about thanking people. They're working harder. They're working longer. Um, the stress is off the chart, you know, and so making sure that we don't let that consume us. Um, and also, I want to challenge everybody, and I need to practice what I preach, but we need to find balance and take care of our families, and we need to take care of ourselves. Um, it's hard to take care of others if we're not taking care of ourselves. And so stress is a, it, it's crazy. I mean, it can really uh, affect you in such a negative way that 
that you're not going to be available for your coaches and you would not be able to be intentional and do the job to the best of your ability. So please take care of you. And I also want to make sure we keep uh, Coach Bartell from Grand Prairie ISD in your prayers. He came down with COVID and he is currently on a ventilator. And um, I, I haven't had an update uh, other than that, um, you know, as far as I don't think there's been a change. If anyone on the call knows any differently, please let us know. But um, please keep him and his family in, in your prayers. So um, it's just it's a difficult time, you know, for everybody. But I, we said this last time at the meeting. I know everybody knows it, but our coaches need us more than ever. And I feel like our kids need our coaches more than ever. So we just have to keep fighting the fight and take it one day at a time. So appreciate all our committee members and our panelists today. And then I want to turn it over for state business to Bob DeYoung. And Bob, thank you for your leadership for you and Rusty during this challenging time. I know that it put uh, more hours and more stress on, on you guys as well. So thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Appreciate your leadership. And um, we appreciate the work of all the folks on the panel today and all the folks that are in on the call. There's like 100 people involved in the call today. And I know all we do is seem like as we have Zoom meetings one after the other, but there's so much quality information shared in meetings like this. Um, I am pleased that we have taken what was initially a two hour meeting a couple of months ago down to an hour. So that's probably really good for you guys because you've got other things to tend to. A um, couple of announcements. Um, number one is we had about 300 folks attend yesterday's round table which was um, the panel had Susan Elza on it and our THS ADA officers. That was very well done uh, by Patrick Cohan. And then David Kirkendall was one of the guys on the call also, uh, also with Philip O'Neill, but uh, very informational and very spot on with uh, topics that were pertinent to what we're going through right now. A couple of quick questions for you guys. In Houston, they're dealing with a basketball officials shortage and they're going to even number districts playing Tuesday and Friday and odd number districts playing Wednesday and Saturday. I don't know if that's affecting you guys up in the DFW area or hopefully not. So give me a thumbs up that you're okay or a thumbs down that you're having to make adjustments. As far as Becky's, I know. <laughs> Becky <laughs> sideways. Sideways. <laughs> Same here. Okay, well, that's that's uh, better than Houston's having to deal with, so I hope it continues for you. The second one is the skill training that came up at council. I know there were two proposals, both a little bit different, both a little similar, um, but one of the ideas was with the sports that are not in season, um, that they have been given the ability to do strength conditioning training outside the school day for an hour, and the proposal was to allow them to do either strength training and or skill training outside the school day. So I'm, I'm out of the profession now, so I don't know how a coach feels, but how do you guys feel about having non sports that are not in season, the ability to do skill training outside the school day? Good thing, bad thing, or is it too early to have an opinion on that? What do you think? Yeah, I would love to open this up to anybody on, on you know, on our committee members, uh, our committee chairs, or panelists. Um, any thoughts from anybody? Bob, I like the idea of that. Um, the only challenge is for the, the teams that are on um, the coaches that are in season right now, that's a challenge with the facility conflict. I, I mean, locker rooms, for example, basketball and volleyball, to have that one hour added, it's hard to coordinate the timing of that and some are in virtual learning and some are not. So it, it's, that, that's the challenge that presents. I do like that, that the coaches have the opportunity to do that, but that's a challenge that they have, they have to face. Very good. And Thank I agree you. with Sylvia. Yeah, I agree with Sylvia. It, it's one of those things that looks good and sounds good, and then I worry about the logistics. But part of it I do like is the access and opportunity for our kids who cannot afford private lessons and club. Um, we have a gap there. It's like the haves and the have-nots, and, and, you know, we have parents spending thousands of dollars for private lessons and, and specific skills training. And if we can offer that, maybe that's a good thing. But then I go back to burnout of our coaches and are we asking too much? And as soon as it's a rule and as soon as it's passed and you have one school doing it and one school not, especially in a multi-school district, it, it, it's going to be tough on an AD to say, well, I can't force them to do it. Um, and then I worry, I do worry about burnout for our coaches. Um, so 
it, I see both sides and honestly with COVID, I have not really landed on a definite opinion yet, a yes or a no, to be honest. Well, I think the good thing is we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna study it um, for the next several months and they'll be asking for y'all's input. So be thinking about that, talk to your coaches and we'll see where it goes. A couple of state conference announcements. Obviously, you know we're going virtual December 7th through the 10th. Um, those dates coincide, like Lisa said, with the national conference, December 7th through the 13th. But as she stated, and I'm about to state, most of our information is gonna be recorded and available online for you to access whenever, you, whenever you're comfortable doing that. So I would really encourage you to, to attend both conferences and knowing that you have a couple of months to access the information is a little bit more, um, makes you feel good. You don't have to get it all done at one, at one time. Um, additionally, if you made a hotel reservation for our state conference in Waco and you, you did it under the block, they were all canceled, you don't have to do anything. If you did not do your hotel reservation under our block, then you would need to cancel it yourself. So make sure you go back and check with your, with your assistants and your secretaries to see how you actually did it because you don't want to get a hundred dollar bill each day for the conference if we're not going. Um, state conference, like I said, are those four dates. You will have live entertainment from Rusty and guest speakers from 8.45 to 10 each of those four days. And then after 10 o'clock, you will be able to access all of our TAC classes, like Jerry mentioned, in the library. So as soon as Monday the 7th gets here, and so does 10 o'clock in the morning gets here, you can watch any video at any time um, during the conference or after the conference for a period of several weeks. So you'll be able to do that. We've got about um, 14 TAC classes that we, will be pre-recorded, and then you'll probably have Dr. Ells and Dr. Brightup, um, our officers and the Commissioner of Education, uh, Mike Morath, who will be doing live, live uh, production from nine to 10 each of those four mornings. Um, let's talk about awards. All right, so we've been holding a slate, of, a slate of awards since March. We couldn't do it in March, couldn't do it in June, couldn't do it in December. So what we're going to do is have another event. Hopefully it will be a live event. It needs to be in March called the Spring Sponsor Showcase, where we will have um, TAC classes. We will have programming special for our, our, our 30 or 35 sponsors. Uh, they'll be there to interact with you guys. We'll have an awards reception the first night of that event in which we will give the, uh, the regional ADs of the year that have been waiting to be honored. We will give all of our national awards. We'll also give our um, PBK Athletic Director of the Year Award for who, the person who would receive that Rodney Chant back last March or last, uh, last July, I guess. Yes, I get my months mixed up. So what that means is we will take our three Hall of Honor inductees and we will move them all the way from where they are right now to June. So we will not have a new class of inductees. We'll have the same three that will move over, which is Bubba for you guys, and we'll honor him in June along with Marmion and Dr. Brightup. And then we'll have a new slate of award winners for your regional ADs of the year, your national awards, your Joe Bill, Bill Fox, and also some guy sitting on this show here who's gonna be the AD of the year. I would assume that we will vote for him. Is that correct? He said, he, he said no, okay. All right, and then last thing I have for you guys is um, our state conference in June will be at the Kalahari Resort, which none of us have been to yet, but it is a family-oriented resort. So if you choose to mix business and pleasure, you can bring your family down there to enjoy the uh, the water park and things like that at the Kalahari. It really, uh, I can see Valerie saying, heck no. <laughs> so I should say adults only, unless you choose to bring your kids. But the neat thing about the Kalahari is we will all be under one roof. It will not be nine different hotels. We can put all, all, all of our exhibitors in one big room and uh, it'll be a great place to have the event. So keep your fingers crossed for our spring sponsor showcase in March and our Hall of Honor in our state conference coming up in June. Um, any questions for Bob? That's all I've got for you today. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Good deal. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Anything else from anybody on the panel or committee chairs? Hey, Leslie, this is Lisa. I just wanted to um, thank you, number one, for your leadership. And also, whenever I get the opportunity to represent this great state and, and specifically uh, this region, um, it, I always think of it as an honor. 
on November the 4th, I'm going to speak to the Washington, uh, Washington State Athletic um, Directors. And, and it's about inspiring them through these hard times. And so um, I just wanted to thank the panelists and, and then those that are listening and watching. Uh, the way we're doing things right now and how we're lifting each other up, uh, those are the things that I've, I, I'll, I'll talk about. Um, and so just know when I go out and I'm speaking, I carry you guys with me. And so I, I just wanted to thank you all for your words of wisdom um, and, and the support that we have for each other. You know, we, we can do this because ADs, we deal with uncertainty every day. This just happened to be one that we all have that same uh, thing that we're dealing with. But like you said, everything else is still going on as well. So again, I just want to thank you guys for your leadership and, uh, and keep fighting a good fight because we know we're doing the best thing for kids. And, uh, you know, my, my, my number, is, I can give it to anybody. If you need an ear, I'm here for you. And I know that I, I, I feel the same about you guys. So if I need you, I'm going to reach out to you guys as well. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. We really appreciate uh, your leadership and, and you represent us so well. So thank you so much. Uh, well, in closing, I just want to thank everyone, all committee chairs, our state sponsors, uh, Bob and our panelists today, and then everybody that took the time to, to be on this call today. How I wish it was in person. I can't wait uh, until we get back uh, to meeting in person. And I don't know when that's going to be. That's a great question. You know, our next meeting is scheduled for November 18th. So I'm pretty sure at this point with the way things are, that will have to be a Zoom and you will get that agenda and that information. But I look forward to the day where we can meet in person again. Uh, but make sure, check on each other, reach out if you need anything. Um, every one of us, uh, I, I know we're willing to help each other. And I, I'm so appreciative of the group texts that I get occasionally with what are y'all doing about this? Or what about basketball? What about tickets? What about you know student sections? Um, it's just great to, to share information. And so if you're on this call and you're feeling like you need help, um, you've just got so many people willing to help and lift you up. And, and there's not one of us that has all the answers, but all of us together have bits and pieces of something that's worked, or we have some things we've done and we've had to change because it did not work well. And we're happy to, to share and happy to help. And I just appreciate all of you. Um, so I hope you have a good day. Hang in there. And uh, best of luck to all of you as we go into the playoffs and then get ready for our next phase uh, with, with basketball season and spring sports starting. So thank you all for being here today and appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.